What up everybody, back again. Today we are talking about time, looking at fractions of a clock. So let's wake on up and get to doing some math. So your objective today, today I will be able to recognize and use common fractions on a clock to tell time. So here's our math vocabulary. Typically, if you've been doing lessons with Instructabees, you know we do our math vocabulary first, write down the terms we'll be using, and then we use them as we do our math. Today's a little bit different because today really is about learning math vocabulary. So you'll see your math vocabulary on your guided notes. If you don't have a copy, you can check out the description of the video and you'll see a link to that. If not, you can go ahead and pause and jot this down. And what we're gonna be doing is we're actually going to be filling our math vocabulary out as we do the lesson. So a little bit different today. First, we have half, right? So we have a clock face. And the cool thing about this clock face, right, it's basically split into fractions already. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 equal pieces for your hour. And then you have 60 minutes for your minutes, right? So it's split into fractions already. The clock face is really a perfect way to learn and start to use fractions. So when you talk about half, people typically say half an hour. So we wanna figure out, okay, what is one half of an hour? My denominator tells me two, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave my um, minute hand the same. I'm gonna rotate my hour hand around and split this clock face into two. And you'll notice when I highlight it, that I have now split my clock face into two equal groups. And we know that when we're talking about fractions, they have to be equal groups of the whole. So how many minutes is in one half? Well, we could count them, right? So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So we actually know there's 30 minutes here. Or we could have, if we knew that there was 60 minutes total, if we split that into two equal groups, that would be 30 in each group. So one half of an hour equals 30 minutes. And then obviously if you have two halves, so both parts of that, that would be 60 minutes, which is how many minutes are on the clock face for an hour. Let's take a look at another common fraction people use when they talk about fractions. And when they talk about force, they're gonna use this word quarters, right? And the way I remember that is, it takes four quarters to make a dollar bill. So quarters is really equal to the fraction one fourth. So if you have one fourth, you might say you have a quarter. If you have three fourths, you would say that you have three quarters. Let's take a look at what, what happens when we split our clock face into four equal groups. Here would be my first fourth. In this one fourth, we have five, 10, 15 minutes. So we know that one fourth of my clock or one fourth of an hour is going to be 15 minutes. Now that's kind of, that's different than when they talk about money because when they talk about money, a quarter is 25 cents. So a lot of people think when they say a quarter and they're talking about time, they're talking about 25 minutes. But in money, a quarter is equal to 25 cents because when you have four equal groups of 25, that makes a dollar. For a clock, when you have four equal groups of 15, which I can shade in right now to show you, you make groups or four groups of 15 minutes, right? So if you do 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15, that gives you a total of 60. So one fourth or one quarter of an hour is 15 minutes. If you have two quarters, right? That'd be one, two, the green and the yellow part together. That's going to be 30 minutes. And that's actually equal to the equivalent fraction one half. So you would say that this is half an hour. If you have three fourths or three quarters, right? Like we would say with words, you have 15, 30, 45. So three quarters of an hour is 45 minutes, okay? And then obviously if you have four fourths, that's equal to two halves, which is equal just to one hour, and that would be 60 minutes. So when you're looking at one fourth of an hour or one fourth of this clock face, that's equal to 15 minutes. Now, when we're talking about this today, we're only talking about minutes. We're not talking about the hours on the clock face. So you, some of you guys might say, well, Mr. Butler, the green part's also equal to three hours if we're looking at the hours on the clock. And that's true, but today we're really focused on the minutes because these are the fractions they use when they are describing minutes when looking at a clock. And we'll look at common phrases that they use them in right now. So now that you know and understand where these 
times came from, where the 15 minutes and the 35, or sorry, and the 45 minutes and the 30 minutes came come from, let's take a look at some common phrases. Sometimes in, when you ask somebody the time, they'll say half past the hour. What that means is 30 minutes, right? Because a half of an hour is 30 minutes. We just learned that by looking at our clock face. That'd be 30 minutes past or after the hour, okay? So whatever the hour is, and then 30 minutes past that. Sometimes they'll say quarter past the hour. And we know now that a quarter is one fourth. It's another word, way of saying one fourth, right? So one fourth of an hour we just learned is 15 minutes. So quarter past the hour would be 15 minutes past the hour. And then they have quarter till. Now this right here looks the same as past, but till means you're almost to the next hour. So what this means is you're 15 minutes from the next hour, okay? So if it's quarter till seven, it'd be 15 minutes till seven, which would be 6.45. You're one fourth of an hour away from the next hour, okay? So let's take a look at these you try problems for you to try them out. Okay, now if you're not ready, you can just write them down as we go over them. If you wanna try them out by yourself and then check your answers, please pause right now, solve them, and then check the answers. And then I'm just gonna prove the answers on the clock right here. So I have quarter past seven, okay? So hopefully you just paused it and you've checking your answers right now. So I know a quarter is 15 minutes because it's one fourth of a clock and it's past seven, which means my hour hand is gonna be past seven Okay, somewhere in between seven and eight. And quarter past seven would be one fourth past seven o'clock. So if it was seven o'clock, your hand would be right here and you went 15 minutes past that. So your answer would be 7.15. Let me erase that. If you have half past 12, okay, we know we're again, we're past 12. So my hour is going to be 12 something. And then half of an hour is 30 minutes. So really what they're saying is, 30 minutes past 12, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, or you could have just split the clock in half in your head and drawn where the minute hand would go. And we're gonna say that that is 1230, right? So we are past 12 and we are half of an hour past 12. And we just learned that half of an hour is equal to 30 minutes. And then the last one we have quarter till five, or five o'clock. So we know that it's not quite five o'clock yet, right? So my hour hand should be somewhere over here. And if it was five o'clock, my minute hand would be pointing right at the 12. So quarter till five means we're one fourth of an hour away from five. And so we know that the one fourth of an hour, the minute hand was right here, because that'd be one fourth, two fourth, three fourth, right? And then four fourth. So we're one fourth of an hour away from five, which means it is going to be four. 45. We're quarter till five. That means we have one fourth of an hour left until it's five o'clock. <laughs> Welcome to the challenge zone. Okay, so we looked at this. I told you a clock face is an awesome way to discover and start to use fractions. Okay, now we only went over halves and fourths or halves and quarters if we're using um, the names for those fractions. I want you to look and try to find three other denominators you could use and split your clock face into equally, right? Because fractions have to be equal groups. So try to find three other denominators that you could use and then write down how many minutes would that be, okay? So how many minutes is each of those fractions? Go ahead and write them down in the challenge zone part of your notes. And when you're done, go ahead and push play. And again, you're only trying to find three there are, I think, eight or nine other ones. So if you want to try to find all of them, go for it. And then we'll go over them together very quickly. All right. So if you did not get the first couple ones I did, that's totally fine. I put them in order that made the most sense to me from easiest to most difficult possibly. So if hopefully you got three of these. If not, don't worry about it. The first one I thought was pretty easy was thirds. And you could have said that one third of an hour was equal to 20 minutes, two thirds would be equal to 40, and three thirds would be equal to 60. The next one that I actually kind of already talked about that I thought was pretty easy was twelfths. Now I thought this was pretty easy because the clock face is already split into 12 hours and we know you learned that each of those was five minutes. So if you have one twelfth of an hour, 
that's equal to five minutes, right? Two twelfths would have been equal to 10. Three twelfths would have been equal to 15 and so on and so on. And you get all the way maybe to the end, 11 twelfths would have been equal to 55 in minutes and then 12 twelfths would have been equal to 60 minutes. So you knew, even if you didn't get that one, I know you already knew that because we use those hours to help count by five minutes when we're trying to count our time like we talked about when we were in third grade. Now our next one I thought was a little bit harder and that was fifths. Okay, if you had one fifth of an hour, that was equal to 12. Two fifths would have been equal to 24. Three fifths of an hour is 36 minutes. Four fifths of an hour is 48 minutes. And of course, five fifths of an hour would be 60 minutes. Six also work. So one sixth of an hour would be 10 minutes. Two sixths would be 20 minutes. Three sixths is an equivalent fraction to one half. So that's just like saying half of an hour. So that'd be 30 minutes. Four sixths, 40 minutes. Five sixths, 50 minutes. And obviously, 6, 6 would be equal to one whole, which would be 60 minutes. And then tenths. So if you split this into 10 equal parts, your fraction face, you would have got 1 tenth equals 6 minutes. 2 tenths would have equaled 12 minutes. 5 tenths, which is an equivalent fraction of 1 half, would have been half of an hour, 30 minutes, right? And if you had 9 tenths, that would have been 54 minutes. And then obviously 10 tenths would have been 60 minutes. And then these last three were some of the more difficult ones, bigger denominators. We had 15th, 20th, 30th, and then 60th. So if you had 1 15th of a minute, or sorry, 1 15th of an hour, that would have been equal to 4 minutes. Okay, and then you could skip count from there. I'm not going to do all 15 just to save us some time. If you had 1 20th of an hour, that would have been equal groups of three minutes in each 20th. 1 30th, oops, I'm going to kind of write it sideways, would have been equal groups of two minutes. And then 60th might have been actually a little bit easier because it's already split into 60 minutes. So obviously each 60th would be equal to one minute. Hopefully you were able to get a couple of those. If not, don't worry, right? We're always trying to add some challenge problems in here to get the thing going. Really the thing we wanted you to get was your definitions of half an hour and quarter of an hour, okay? Um, if you can use those, those are the terms people use the most when they're talking about the time. As always, thank you so much for checking us out today. We appreciate you guys spending your time with Instructed Beats. Check out our awesome elapsed time song. If you haven't done that yet, it is fantastic. You can check out our other lessons and songs at our YouTube channel, Instructed Beats Official. Please check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'd love to have you follow us there. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe. Thank you again, Instructed Beats, out.